Cassie, thank you so much for being willing to share a little bit about your experience. So in the previous module of this training, we shared with families that a child's behavior problem is one of the top five reasons that youth enter foster care to begin with, and that 26% of youth in care have special health care needs, which does include medical, emotional, or behavioral health needs. Um, so because it can be so challenging for a prospective family to envision supporting that child, can you share about the challenges that you've encountered and how you've been able to meet them in your parenting? Sure. So we um, have experienced mostly behavioral health needs with my children. So that can look like aggression, um, not necessarily, you know, when everyone says aggression, you get like really scared about like punching holes in walls or like sending people to the hospital. Um, but think of like normal childhood behaviors and just kind of taken up a notch, either in intensity or frequency or both. Um, so maybe we're having tantrums with a three-year-old or a two-year-old, but instead of them happening like once every day, they're happening like four to five times a day. Mm -hmm. So, um, it doesn't always look like big scary aggression but it can be like kind of exhausting to have to deal with the behaviors a little bit more than you would anticipate with um your kind of typically developing child so looking at those behaviors we then um access a lot of support so advocating for supports in schools accessing resources like psychological evaluations extra therapies, whether that's behavioral therapy, occupational therapy, um, play therapy, or parent-child interaction therapy. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for supports when you kind of figure out the direction that you want to go. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of one side of the coin, but you have other experiences as well. So again, in that in the first module, we shared um, that kids in care, typically we see 39% versus 12% of the general population. So that's over 200 times more likely to be considered neurodiverse. And we're using that really broad term to just express that a child has brain differences. It could be um, attention hyperactivity deficit disorder. It could be oppositional defiant disorder. It could be anything else that kind of impacts their cognitive or social functioning. So again, I ask for you, can you demystify that a little bit for us? How um, have you been able to meet the challenges and support um, that youth? And then how do you also take care of yourself as a parent who's doing that? Yeah, so um, again, lots and lots of therapy options. And mm -hmm. I do wanna like say this broadly, just because a child receives some kind of neurodiversity diagnosis, whether that's autism or ADHD, doesn't necessarily mean that they need to be enrolled in like every therapy under the sun mm -hmm. or for a million hours a week. But there are a lot of options available um, for those kids. And so I just really encourage families to like take advantage of what take advantage of what is recommended, take advantage of what you think would be a good fit for your kid, but also like, don't be afraid to say no, whether that's for a season or forever. Um, that's been really important for me and taking care of myself. Cause it's really easy to say like, okay, well this child needs therapies like X, Y, Z, and they're all for an hour a week. And I have to pull him out of school and take him here. And then this child needs all of these therapies. And I also have to pull him out of school, but like, wait, I also need to work. And I also need to do things like eat and sleep and grocery shop and like relax and spend time with my kids just having fun. So that can mean like saying no, like, okay, well, we don't, this one isn't like top priority right now. So we're going to put it on hold for a little bit so we can have some time as a family or we're doing this extracurricular. So we're going to take a pass on this like super specialized therapy and come back to it when the school year starts or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely take advantage of the services available. Also, don't be afraid to like say no, just because there is a diagnosis doesn't mean they have to be enrolled in every possible service under the sun. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that. Like, it sounds like for you, you've worked really hard to find normalcy for your kids where they yeah. have diagnoses and issues, but that doesn't mean that they don't get to go to swimming lessons and just do the stuff that regular kids get to enjoy. Yeah. I think. Like, just because you have a diagnosis doesn't mean that you don't get to like be a kid. Mm -hmm. So we prioritize like, let's go to the playground. Like I don't need to be in therapy five nights a week. Like 
let's take a night where we like sit on the couch and watch movies or let's prioritize like going to the playground or like you said going to swimming lessons and doing those kind of extracurricular things that aren't necessarily considered therapeutic I would argue that they are but that's a whole other yeah subject. yeah I think we both agree that like a child is learning just as much in those regular settings yeah. um, as they are in like a formal official type programming so I love just like the overall picture you just shared about your family that you are parenting neurodiverse youth and youth with behavioral challenges you're also really focused on making sure you're connected and attached with your child you're doing those movie nights playgrounds and just getting to enjoy your child you know, yeah. in the community, enjoying the, their unique strengths, regardless of what, you know, diagnosis that they have on paper. It can definitely be easy to get like swept away in diagnoses and therapies. And, oh my gosh, I need to do this, 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 and this to help them be like the most successful ever. But a lot of times, like giving them a chance to be a kid, really looking at connecting with them, like that goes just as far as any therapy under the sun does mm -hmm. as far as like their relationship with you and just their quality of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. My last very quick question is um, what are um, for each of your kids? What are some things that you just absolutely love about your child? Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, my five-year-old has the strongest sense of justice. Mm -hmm. um, family members and I jokingly call him our Batman kid mm -hmm. because he always wants to do what's right he always wants other people to like do what's right and he just like feels so strongly that like people need to be treated right and we need to you know do the right thing and he's so like just kind and loving and wonderful about it mm -hmm. and then my youngest is three now and he is just a ball of energy and just a ton of fun so you'll find him he'll like want to climb up your shoulders like a jungle gym and he'll be like laughing and giggling and there's always like giggles and running around and like playing sports and doing all the things he's just so like fun and just full of life yeah yeah, yeah. full yeah. of life that's a very yeah. good explanation awesome thank you so much for sharing that absolutely